Since the controversy surrounding Hong Kong's extradition bill, there have been baseless criticisms of police handling of the protesters' indulge in endemic violence and wanton vandalism. We should be aware of the hypocrisy of the groups which malign the police, but turn a blind eye to the violence of the masked mobs. In support of HKSAR's fourth periodic report on the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, this report will examine the violence of masked rioters and pinpoint the hypocrisy and absurdity of the pro rioter individuals and groups who point fingers at the police. Since last June, some groups have very often issued statements denouncing the ways in which the Hong Kong police are quelling the unrest. A case in point is an open letter to the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompier, jointly penned by several political groups such as Demisisto, Hong Kong Higher Institutions International Affairs Delegation, Fight for Freedom etc. According to their letter dated March 10, 2020, formal investigations will be launched by the U.S. government to identify and consider sanctioning those Hong Kong government officials who are directly responsible for the extensive police brutality that grossly violated internationally recognized human rights since June 2019. Likewise, the sounds of the silence, a small political group formed in the midst of the 2019 Hong Kong protest, has contended. The HKPF has been relentlessly violating the United Nations principles on the use of force and firearms by law enforcement officials during the public order events. Not only was it unnecessary in the majority of cases where force was executed, but these officers were not held accountable for any arbitrary use of force and firearms as a criminal offense. Double quote. These accusations seem to have been unfair and unfounded. Real police brutality is a nightmare, but not in Hong Kong. A dozen of French people got killed in the midst of Yellow Vest protests. By contrast, the police so far have not killed one single person in Hong Kong. More than 2,000 Hong Kong people have been injured since June 2019 and many of them are police. As the former commissioner of police Stephen Lowe aptly argued last year, the protesters started to use weapons to charge our cordon lines, then we had to response. I consider my officers were acting in accordance with our guidelines and they rightfully used force to protect themselves and other people at the scene. More importantly, as the annual report about human rights in China, Hong Kong and Macau released by US Department of State on March 11th has indicated, there were no credible reports that Hong Kong government or its agents had committed arbitrary or unlawful killings, as was claimed by some protesters. We should be aware of the hypocrisy of the groups which malign the police, but turn a blind eye to the violence of the masked mobs. Compared to those of the police, the arms and armor of protesters were rudimentary in Hong Kong. However, they had turned to be more aggressive and brutal as the conflict was escalating. From last summer to this spring, the black-clad rioters attacked police officers with about hundreds of gasoline bombs. They also used poles and slingshots for scuffles and set fire to business, street barricades and metro stations. Tung Chung metro station was greatly damaged and its staff were intimidated. They thrown rocks, bricks and Molotov cocktails to the civilians thought to be pro-China. In one of the most shocking incidents, a masked rioter dressed in black poured flammable liquid on a man shouting pro-Beijing slogans and set him ablaze in Maron Shan. He was sent to hospital in a critical condition with burns to at least a third of his body. He also lost part of his left ear in the attack. It was a clear case of attempted murder. Equally tragically, a 70-year-old man died after being hit on head with a brick during a clash with rioters in Shuing Shui last November. On July 19, 2019, the police discovered an explosive depot with 2 kilograms of acetone peroxide high explosive as well as gasoline bombs, knives, catapult and t-shirts of the Hong Kong National Fronts. This was the largest ever bomb plot in Hong Kong history. If it had not been filed in time, the consequence could have been devastating. On March 8, 2020, the police arrested 17 people and seized 2.6 tons, 2.9 short tons, of explosives in raids linked to three earlier anti-government bomb plot at public facilities. On November 13, 2019, the High Court refused to grant the Student Union of the Chinese University an injunction which could have restricted police access to the campus where hazardous chemicals had been stolen from laboratories and hundreds of bombs had been manufactured. Shortly after the court judgment, Shadin Law Court suffered a rash of arson attack. On December 8, 2019, shortly after Jimmy Sham TSZ Kit, the co-convener of the Civil Human Rights Front, argued that the clock was ticking for the government and the chief executive was being given a last chance to cave into their demands. The rioters threw two petrol bombs at the front door of the Court of Final Appeal. In the aftermath of the court bombs, the Hong Kong Bar Association denounced the violence against judiciary, people who commit such acts are not genuine protesters but criminals, they must be brought to justice, the Law Society. The professional body for solicitors, also condemned, vetting dissatisfaction by throwing petrol bomb at court buildings and vandalizing property must be abhorred, those who commit these criminal acts must stop taking the law into their own hands. These acts will not help resolve any problem. However, a group, widely deemed as the de facto voice of the protesters, did not condemn the bomb attacks, claiming instead that the court had become toothless tool. Long before the eruption of radical violence, the brutal element had marred the original protest movement. A telling example is the storming of the Legislative Council. On July 1, 2019 at around 9 p.m., hundreds of rioters stormed the legislature after breaking through the glass walls and metal doors of the building. Indulging in mindless thuggery, they damaged public property, smashed furniture and defaced the Hong Kong emblem inside the legislature. This was violence and mayhem of the worst sort which ruthlessly trampled on our rule of law. 
This was social vandalism of the worst sort which wreaked havoc on our one country two systems. In early August, 2019, while rioters was illegally occupying the airport, they claimed that they were protesting about police brutality. However, their protest took a turn toward vigilantism. Thousands of protesters blocked passengers and occupied terminals, thereby forcing the authority to suspend all check-ins. Apart from disrupting flights and intimidating passengers, the rioters also beat up two civilians, one of whom was a mainland Chinese journalist, suspected of being mainland agents. They knocked one man senseless and illegally detained and physically harmed the other. More outrageous is their intimidation against a British onlooker named Richard Scottford who tried to rescue one of the victims. In the midst of the mayhem, Scottford was so courageous as to shout, I could not walk away from a man being beaten to a pulp, it was due to this remark that he was himself then roughed up for his trouble. While ambulance crews were busy ferrying out one of the injured victims, the mob was so callous as to ambush the police officers who were assisting the crew. To beat the victim again on the stretcher and to use baggage carts to obstruct the ambulance. According to the Article 11 of Geneva Accords, Protocol 2, medical units and transports must at all times be respected. Protected and not be the objects of attack, the brutality of the masked mob is a clear case of violation of the spirit or letter of Article 11 of the Geneva Convention, Protocol 2, which guarantees the protection and respect of medical units. Clearly, it is not the embattled police, but the brutality of rioters that has infringed upon the human rights of civilians by international standard. Faced with unprecedented protest violence, the police has been compelled to use necessary force to restore law and order. In the course of their duties, police officers also face the prospect of serious injuries or even death. As the fourth periodic report submitted by Hong Kong government to the Human Rights Committee under the Article 40 of Covenant has aptly argued, it is also the government's responsibility to maintain public order and ensure the rights of other people to use the public space or road as well as their safety. The police have the responsibility to take necessary measures against any unlawful behavior. The shame is not that a police is using necessary force to quell the unrest. The shame is how the rioters trample on our rule of law. The shame is how some distort the truth to smear the police.